The Target Corporation is a big box retailer that opened in 1962. Thank you for your suggestion. Presenting the Target Color Guard. Pastel colors that command attention. Frosted denim jeans and miniskirts, all at 30% off. A rainbow selection of sweaters is also 30% off. Display the colors this Christmas. Just march into Target. Target, come celebrate the season. Target Corporation bears the strong imprint of its founder, George Draper Dayton. Dayton began his career as a banker. Less than 10 years later, in 1883, he was rich enough to buy the Bank of Worthington in Minnesota. Meanwhile, he had married and become active in the Presbyterian Church. Dayton's connection with the Presbyterian Church proved to be instrumental to the rise of his Dayton Company. In 1893, the year of the recession that sent local real estate prices tumbling, the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Minneapolis burned down. The insurance did not cover the cost of the new building, and the only other source of income, a corner lot next to the demolished church, was unsellable because of the real estate market was doing poorly. The congregation prevailed on the Dayton family, who were faithful members of the church, decided to purchase it so the building of a new church could proceed. Dayton bought it and eventually erected a six-story building on the lot. Casting about for tenants, he decided to buy the nearby Goodfellow Dry Goods store and set it up in the new building. In the spring of 1902, the store was known as the Goodfellow Dry Goods store, and in 1903, the corporate name was changed to Dayton Dry Goods Company and then seven years later, simply Dayton Company, the forerunner of Dayton Hudson Corporation and ultimately Target Corporation. Eventually, the store would expand to fill the six-story edifice. Dayton, with no previous experience in the retail trade, wielded tight control of the company until his death in 1938. His principles of thrift and sobriety and his connections as a banker enabled the company to grow. As long as he was at the helm, the store was run as a family enterprise. Every Christmas Eve, he would hand out candy to each employee of the store. Obsessed with punctuality, he was known to lock the doors at the onset of a meeting, forcing latecomers to wait and apologize to him in person afterwards. The store was run on strict Presbyterian guidelines. No liquor was sold. The store was closed on Sunday. No business travel or advertising was permitted on the Sabbath and Dayton Company refused to advertise in a newspaper that sponsored liquor ads. This approach did not stifle business. Dayton Company became extremely successful, a multi-million dollar business by the 1920s. Dayton Company decided it was ready to expand, purchasing J.B. Hudson & Son, a Minneapolis-based jeweler in 1929. After the death of George, his son Nelson Dayton took over the presidency of Dayton Company in 1938, when it was already a $14 million business, and he saw it grow to a $50 million enterprise. In January of 1944, Dayton's became one of the first stores in the nation to offer its workers a retirement policy, followed in 1950 by a comprehensive insurance policy. With Nelson Dayton's death in 1950, Dayton Company embarked on a new era. Instead of a one-man rule, the company was led by a team of five Dayton cousins, although one of them, Nelson's son Donald Dayton, assumed the title of president. The prohibition of liquor in the store's dining rooms were dropped, and soon Dayton Company would be completely secularized, as well as advertising and doing business on Sunday. The new management of Dayton Company undertook radical and costly innovations, including the creation of Target in 1962. While working for the Dayton Company, John Geis developed the concept of the upscale discount retailing. On May 1, 1962, the Dayton Company, using Geis's concept, 
opened its first Target discount store located at 1515 West County Road B in the St. Paul, Minnesota suburb of Roseville. The name Target originated from Dayton's publicity director and was intended to prevent consumers from associating the new discount store chain with the department store. Douglas Dayton served as the first president of Target. The new subsidiary ended its first year with four units, all in Minnesota. Target stores lost money in its initial years, but reported its first gain in 1965 with sales reaching $39 million, allowing a fifth store to open in the Minneapolis suburb of Bloomington. Target stores expanded outside of Minnesota by opening two stores in Denver and sales exceeded $60 million. The first store built in Colorado in 1966, outside of Minnesota, located in Glendale, Colorado. The next year, the Dayton Holdings was reorganized as Dayton Corporation and it went public with its first offering of common stock. It opened two more Target stores in Minnesota, resulting in a total of nine stores. In 1968, Target changed its bullseye logo to a more modern look and expanded into St. Louis, Missouri with two more stores. By 1969, Target stores had expanded into Texas and Oklahoma with six new units and they built their first distribution center in Minnesota. The Dayton Company merged with Detroit-based J.L. Hudson Company that year to become Dayton Hudson Corporation, the 14th largest retailer in the United States, consisting of Target and five major department store chains, Dayton's, Diamond's, Hudson's, John A. Brown, and Lippmann's. In 1970, Target stores added seven new units, including two units in Wisconsin, and the 24-unit chain reached $200 million in sales. Dayton Hudson said at the time that they could forecast their discount store operations, overshadowing their department store revenue in the near future. In 1971, Dayton Hudson acquired 16 stores from the Arlen's department store chain in Colorado, Iowa, and Oklahoma. Two of those units reopened as Target stores that year. In 1972, the other 14 units from the Arlen's acquisition was reopened as Target stores to make a total of 46 units. As a result of its rapid expansion and the top executive's lack of experience in discount retailing, the chain reported its first decrease in profits since its initial years. Its loss in operational revenue was due to overstocking and carrying goods over multiple years, regardless of inventory and storage costs. In 1975, Target opened two more stores, reaching 49 units in nine states, and $511 million in sales. That year, the Target discount chain became Dayton Hudson's top revenue producer. In 1978, the company acquired Mervyn's and became the seventh largest general merchandise retailer in the United States. By 1979, there were over 80 Target stores in 11 states. Dayton Hudson reached $3 billion in sales with $1.1 billion coming from Target store chain alone. In 1980, Target acquired the Ironway discount retail chain of 40 stores and one distribution center from Indianapolis-based L.S. Ayers & Company. Those stores re-rebranded as Target stores, bringing the number of stores to 151 and over $2 billion in sales. In 1986, the company acquired 50 Gemco stores from Lucky Stores in California and Arizona, which made Target Stores the dominant retailer in Southern California as the chain grew to 246 stores. In 1989, it expanded by 60 units, especially in the southeastern United States, where it entered the Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina markets for a total of 399 units in 30 states with over $7.5 billion in sales. 
The new stores included the Gold Circle and Richway chains in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. In 1990, Target Stores opened its first Target Greatland General Merchandise Superstore in Apple Valley, Minnesota. By 1991, Target Stores had opened 43 Target Greatland units and sales reached dime billion dollars. In 1999, Dayton Hudson acquired Fedco and its 10 stores in a move to expand its Super Target operation into Southern California. It reopened six of these stores under the Target brand. By the end of the 1990s, there were 912 stores in 44 states, with sales reaching $26 billion. In January of 2000, Dayton Hudson Corporation changed its name to Target Corporation, and by then, between 75% to 80% of the corporate's total sales and earnings came from Target stores, while the other four chains, Dayton's, Hudson's, Marshall Fields, and Mervyn's, were used to fuel the growth of the discount chain. Target at that time had 977 stores in 46 states, and sales reached almost $30 billion by the end of the year. In 2004, the Target Corporation sold off both Marshall Fields and Mervyn's department store chains. By 2009, Target had over 1,488 stores in 49 states and over $60 billion in sales. In August of 2010, after a lengthy wind down, Target began a nationwide closing of its remaining 262 garden senders, reportedly due to a stronger competition from home improvement stores like Walmart and independent garden centers. They also began adding a fresh produce department to their stores. In December of 2013, Target announced a major data breach potentially involving millions of customer credit and debit card records. The press release revealed that the hack took place between November 27th and December 15th of 2013. Target warned that up to 40 million consumer credit and debit cards may have been compromised. Hackers gained access to the customer names, card numbers and expiration dates, and CVV security codes of the cards issued by financial institutions. They also disclosed that debit card PIN data had also been stolen. On January 10th, 2014, Target disclosed that the names, mailing addresses, phone numbers, or email addresses of up to 70 million additional people had also been stolen, bringing the possible number of customers affected up to 110 million people. In October of 2017, Target announced a new online order service called DriveUp, allowing guests to order merchandise online for pickup outside the store. Target announced in February of 2018 that it would shift its sales model for compact discs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs to provide them solely on a contingency basis, citing reduced physical media sales in favor of digital downloads and streaming. In September of 2019, Target announced this new rewards program called Target Circle, which will be coming to all Target stores on October 6, 2019. In conjunction, the name of the store's credit and debit card was announced to be changed to Target Red Card. In August of 2019, Target and the Walt Disney Company announced a partnership to have a Disney store in several Target locations. The Disney store at the Target locations had a shop-and-shop -shop layout with an average square foot of 750 feet. Toys R Us Kids and Target also announced a partnership on October 8, 2019 to relaunch the website of ToysRUs.com. Target also launched Ulta Beauty at Target and deepened its partnerships with Disney, Apple, and Levi Strauss and Company. Thank you for watching. If you like this content and if you haven't already, 
hit that subscribe button. Thanks.